Hello there, my lovely people. Welcome to Malibu TV. This is your coach, Malibu, a holistic life and wellness coach. I help my clients align mind, body, and spirit to experience the abundance that is already available for them. But today, we're not talking about my coaching, right? We are talking about something else before we dive into the topic. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let us grow this community together. I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a coach, I am an author, but most importantly, I have been called to awaken humanity. Welcome to Malibu TV, a place of transformation and wellness. Yes, today we're talking about purpose and uh, this is one of the class that I'm running from tomorrow. So on the 5th of May 2021, this class will be available for you. Even if you see this video after a year, the class will be available for you. You are outside of South Africa. You are not in Pretoria. Wherever you are, this is an online class called Discover, Love, and Profit from Your Purpose. Now, a lot of people might have discovered their purpose, but really they're not uh, uh, um, loving it. They are, And what I mean by love is not fueled by passion right? Because some other purposes look like, oh my God, I cannot do this, right? And some other people do love what they're doing, but they're not getting paid from it. And this is where this whole class is all about. You want to sign up for the program. I will leave the link there. Please do. And let us, you know, let us, let us elevate together. Let us elevate to new dimensions. You know, God wanted us or God has given us actually this gift so that we can empower ourselves financially, physically, emotionally, and everything, and also empower others. And you can only empower somebody else when you are empowered. You will never empower somebody from a place where you are financially miserable, where you are emotionally miserable. No, 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 no. You are going going to empower uh, other people when you are already empowered, right? So like I have already mentioned, we're talking about purpose today and how to discover your purpose. And I need to do a disclaimer. Um, I am not, I'm actually sharing my story today, which is not part of the the, the 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 program that i'm teaching tomorrow i'm just led by the spirit of god to do this amazing work that i'm doing right now right so how do we then discover the purpose um i have been asked a whole lot of questions about that then how do i discover my purpose coach how do i even know uh, that um this is my purpose no, so what I wrote there is that sometimes pain leads to purpose. And the things that, are, that we grow through, that is why I don't want to say going, right? We grow through as people are actually leading us into where we're supposed to go. Now, I need to also do another disclaimer that purpose is not a destination. So five years ago, I started as a coach and that was the things that I was doing and uh, part of those things were not even what I'm currently doing right now, right? And uh, five years ago, I was a mindset coach. I was telling people that you can, you can, you can. But right now, like I said in the beginning, I help my clients align mind, body, and spirit. So I'm I'm working with a holistic well-being of my clients, right? So purpose is never a destination. It's not something that you get into. Purpose is something that when you step into it, it expands. So you need to also be aware of it. So maybe you might know your purpose as as a, as a speaker or a purpose as a coach or a, a healer, whatever you, you believe your purpose is. But that's not the end of your purpose. The more you step onto your purpose, the more it expands. The more you are guided to do a whole lot of other work. And obviously you are guided by God. You are guided by whoever you believe is in your spiritual team, right? So let us begin with my story. When I was between the ages of 8 and 11, I was sexually abused. Now, I say the story most of the time because this is what had, had brought up the healer in me, right? So I was sexually abused. And again, our parents did not have that, you know, uh, what could I say, the room for us to, to really talk about uh, a sex freely like that. I mean, they were taught differently than us and our kids. I mean, maybe Bongo see they would be saying something else about sex that we have never been taught, right? Because of the generational gap and the information that is available to us as a generation, right? 
So age of eight and 11, I say age of eight and 11 because I was still in primary school. So I don't remember actually how long it happened, but I know that I was still very young when it was happening. And when it happened, I couldn't tell anyone about it. Some of you know the, the story. I couldn't tell anyone about it because I didn't have a word. I didn't have anything in my vocabulary to say this person is doing one, two, three on me, right? Then I then uh, went into middle school and middle school is um, uh, now what we call secondary school. So back in the days where I come from, there was middle school. So uh, that was, I think, grade, grade seven, eight, nine years. And then after that, you go to grade 10, which is high school. So now they have combined that. So when I went there, this guy, I know he stopped, right? And that was when I was a teenager. And as a teenager from a place called Rulukhatanikoma, Komahikim is a village. Uh, the only um, entertainment available for us was alcohol. And I started drinking. No one had forced me to drink. I really wanted to drink. And I started drinking. Later on, I wanted to belong to a, a team of people who were like me. The like-minded, what we say, like the like-minded people. I wanted to belong to that type of group. And I found myself um, a, a people that could really uh, or understood me better, which was two of my friends. I'm not going to mention their names because, hey, y'all going to Google people. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I found two of my friends and they were already smoking. So I got into their, that group and I started smoking. Little did I know that the smoking part was going to reveal another thing in me. And I always say that nothing happens by chance, by mistake and or things are just so happening to you because you are a bad person. There is a reason behind everything that is happening to you. Now, when the whole thing was happening by that time, I, I I was called a prostitute and some other guy said he had slept with me at the back of the toilet. Now, because I was a frequent at the tavern near uh, uh, my, my home, right? I, I, you know, constantly Friday, Saturday, we were at the tavern. And don't ask me how you were 12 years of age and you were going to a tavern. There I was, yeah? But all things work in divine order and for our good. And I went to this tavern. One day I found people doing what I used to do with that guy at the back of the toilet. And that was my aha moment that, wow, is this what people are saying? I'm a prostitute because, again, I was not straight, smart or whatever that we call it. I was just, you know, trying to digest all the information that was available for me. And in that process, I was teaching myself of who I am. Now, I listened after that whole incident where I now found out that this is what I did with that guy. And now, as I grow up now, I understand. I mean, that was between the ages of 12 and 15. Now, I understood that, ha, huh, it means that I had sex. It means that I'm no longer a virgin, you know. Now, it, 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 it you know, the light bulb was like, yeah, you know, the aha moment. And in the midst of that, I have... People from my community who think uh, uh, the rumors about me being a prostitute is true because, I mean, I was already every day in the tavern drinking and smoking. I mean, it, the rumor was literally what people thought was true. I mean, even myself, I would believe that if somebody's all, always at the tavern, who is buying you alcohol? You know, they didn't even know that we had a friend who was sponsoring us with alcohol every time. But then in my you know, me trying to uh, be in their shoes, you know, um, it will be who is buying them alcohol every weekend. These people are, are drinking, are drinking and a whole lot of that, right? But all these things were happening in divine order and for my good. And guess what? I found that in the midst of the pain that other people were inflicting in me, I found out that I, I, I was sexually abused. Though I did not tell my parents at that time because I thought, no, no, no one is going to believe me. I mean, I'm just a child who's just doing, I don't know, myself. So I will continue like this and I will put on this face that, you know, um, uh, people don't know that I don't care whether people are saying I am a prostitute or not. Then I lived my life like that. Now, as I lived my life like that, there was part of my body that was responding to the pain. And I've, I, I, I've always been mentioning that in my group, that on my shoulder, 
I always had a pain on my shoulder. This was a place where I, stro I store stress. As you know, for people who do massages or who go for massages, they will always tell you that ah, when you are stressing, they will always tell you that your shoulders are, 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 um, are tense. So that was what was happening to me at that time. But then all these things were leading to the person that I am today, leading me to healing mind, body, and spirit so that people can experience the abundance that they need, right? So when the whole thing ha had happened, I even changed my name when I came to Gauteng. I changed my name to Manebo. And this is where I was picking up the pieces of what was left. And I said, people will give thanks for their pain that I have been through. And obviously that is what is happening, you know? Things are just happening in divine order and for our good, right? So, um, as I wrap up this uh, uh, thing is that things were not happening to me, you know? I was growing through who I am, the essence of who I am, the identity of who I am. Unfortunately now, a lot of people, when they grow through this, they believe that they are pain. They believe that they are rejection just because other people have rejected them. They believe that they are something else. But actually, it is, it is actually the opposite of who you think you are. Because now I understand what healing is. I understand what healing is. I mean, I have walked through my journey of healing, of me having to cut my hair, of me having to accept my forehead, of me having to put on nails, on a whole lot of things. Because what? Because that process was teaching me how to teach other people. That is why I say you can only empower other people when you are empowered. You can only empower people when you understand that you are not a victim, that all these things happen for your good, for you to grow, for you to step into your purpose, for you to, to, to be who God wants you to be. Now, uh, somebody else might say, I did not go through sexual abuse, but but there is something that has happened in your life. And this is what we're going to be doing in, in the program that we are starting tomorrow. That we, we, we're going to dig deeper within us and understand what it is that has been a pattern in my life. That God is calling in my life to be, to, 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 for me to help other people become, right? So you are here and you are saying, what is my purpose? Your purpose is deep within, within you. I'm sorry, my son is making a lot of noise. But anyway, we're going to finish this video, right? So your purpose is something that is deep within you. And I'm not saying that you need to go through everything so that you can help everyone. There are people assigned to you. As, as I've already mentioned about a Bible verse in the book of Jeremiah 1 verse 5, there are people, there is a contract that you have signed your soul and they call it a soul contract. Now, when you sign this contract, you are agreeing that in my life, I'm going to help Lerato, Tsepo, who and who and, and all these people or the people in Rastebek or the people in South Africa or the people... This particular people globally, you had already uh, said yes to it. Now, because you are coming into a human form, what happens is that when you are in a human form, you then forget your purpose because, I mean, we are conditioned. Now we are in religion. Now we are, there's a whole lot of do's and don'ts and why do you have to do that and why not do that, right? And that very thing is what it takes away what God has already done for you. Now, God, the universe, whoever you believe in, then conspires. You know, they work together, your spiritual team, together with archangels, with spirit angels, with guardian angels. They work together to give you certain um certain things that you can understand as a human being like i said i have been sexually abused and there was a time when i was a, a victim and i said why is this happening to me but now i understand that it had to happen so that it doesn't happen because you are bad or your parents or god is trying to punish the generation of na 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 it's happening so that you can step into the truth of who you are right so you want to also get to understand what is your story, which is part of what we are doing. What is your story? My story, it's of pain. So what is the opposite of pain? 
what is the opposite of pain what is the opposite of rejection what is the opposite of the things that you have been through you have been abandoned what is the opposite of that and like i said again purpose is not one thing you cannot say you have arrived at purpose because when you have arrived at purpose something else comes along in your life right so um the, the next thing that i also want to uh, enlighten is that we can learn about our purpose without having to go through pain but then because we are human beings and <laughs> i don't know how to say this in english but anyway you know um we then uh, you know we, we we then go through a, a, a series of painful things in our lives and tomorrow on the group i'm talking about are you addicted to pain are you numbing your pain because that pain is not meant for you to be down there that pain is meant to elevate you now you need to get to a point like right now i'm no longer learning anything out of pain i always say this prayer that god please align me with a timeline of ease i am willing to learn with joy you know with smile with happiness with grace you know i'm willing to learn with that because i do not want to be sexually abused again i do not want to be raped i don't want people to be talking about no i don't want that but right now i'm in the position where i am receiving that which god has already had in store for me in expansion of my purpose by being in ease and i'm saying ease because a lot of us we want to then learn by losing a marriage get and i'm um, half you know experiencing uh, half whatever that you are almost going to die and you don't want to learn that so for the people who already know their purpose you want to get into a space where you are a receptor of ease you know you you can you can do things with ease you can pray with ease you can connect to god with ease you can connect to your guide with ease you don't have to now um, they say uh, there's an accident somewhere and then that's when you pray right so that's it should you want to be part of our class come tomorrow we're starting it's only 500 otherwise do join my 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 group i go there live every wednesdays at half past five south african standard time and thank you for being here do not forget to subscribe and share and like thank you